Welcome back to the channel. Our topic for today is how to design a rectangular footing with concentric loading. First, we will be needing this material and section properties. For the concrete strength, we have 27.6 Newton per square millimeter. For the steel reinforcement yield strength, we have 414 Newton per square millimeter. The column section is 450 millimeters by 450 millimeters. The base of the footing below the natural ground is equals to 1.6 meters. We will assume the dimension of the footing is 3.5 meters by 3 meters by 0.6 meter. We will be using 20 millimeters diameter for the steel reinforcement and the clear concrete cover is 75 millimeters. The bearing capacity of the soil is 240 kilonewton per square meters and the value of soil density is equals to 18 kilonewton per cubic meters. For the loadings. The dead load is equals to 1000 kilonewton and for the live load, we have 815 kilonewton. The first step is to calculate for the effective soil pressure, Q sub E, which is equals to the bearing capacity, 240 kilonewton per square meters, minus the weight of soil, 18 kilonewton per cubic meters multiplied by the height of soil, 1 meter, minus the weight of concrete, 24 kilonewton per cubic meters multiplied by the thickness of footing, 0.6 meter. And that gives us a value of 207.6 kilonewton per square meters. The second step is to check if the assumed size of footing is safe or not. To do that, we will get the value of the actual load that is the sum of the dead load and live load. And that gives us a value of 1815 kilonewton. And since our design is concentric loading, meaning all loads are acting on the center of the footing, the eccentricity E is equals to zero. We will divide the actual loading, 1815 kilonewton by the area of the footing, 3.5 meters by 3 meters. And that gives us a value of 172.86 kilonewton per square meters. And since 172.86 kilonewton per square meters is less than the effective soil pressure, 207.6 kilonewton per square meters. That means that the assumed dimension is safe. The third step is to calculate for the net upward pressure, Q sub U. That is equals to the factored load, 1.2 times dead load, plus 1.6 times live load, divided by the area of footing. And the result is 238.48 kN per square meter. The fourth step is to check if the section is safe for one-way shear. And take note that the critical section is located at the distance d from the face of the column. First, for the x-axis direction, we need to calculate for the shear force VU, and then, we will compare it to the allowable shear. To do that, we will calculate first for the effective depth, d, along x-axis. Now, if we cut through this section here. The effective depth d, is equals to the thickness, 600 mm, minus 1.5 times the diameter, 20 mm, minus concrete cover, 75 mm, and that gives us a value of 495 mm. Then, we will calculate for the x sub s, that is equals to the length lx, minus, open parenthesis, length lx, divided by 2, plus, 0.5 times the column dimension, cx, plus the effective depth, d, close parenthesis. And that gives us a value of 1030 mm. Then, the value of shear force VU, is equals to the net upward pressure, 238.48 kN per square meter, multiplied by the tributary area for one-way shear, that is, X sub S, 1030 mm, times, the width, LY, 3000 mm, divided by square of 1000. That gives us a value of 736.9 kN. And then we will compare this value to the allowable shear, that is equals to the reduction factor, times one-sixth of the square root of the F C prime, times the width B, then multiply by the effective depth, D. And we have, 0.75, times one-sixth of the square root of 27.6, times the width, 3000 mm, times the effective depth, 495 mm, divided by 1000. 
and the result is 975.19 kN. And since the allowable shear is greater than the actual shear force. Therefore, the section is safe for one-way shear along X direction. Next is to check for one-way shear along Y axis. To calculate for the effective depth, D, along Y direction, cutting through this section. The effective depth, D, is equals to the thickness, 600 mm, minus 0.5 times the diameter, 20 mm, minus concrete cover, 75 mm, and that gives us a value of 515 mm. Then, we will calculate for the Y sub S, that is equals to the length, LY, minus, open parenthesis, length LY, divided by 2, plus, 0.5 times the column dimension, CY, plus the effective depth, D, close parenthesis. And that gives us a value of 760 mm. Then, the value of the shear force VU, is equals to the net upward pressure, 238.48 kN per square meter, times, Y sub S, 760 mm, times, the width, LX, 3500 mm, divided by square of 1000. And that gives us a value of 634.36 kN. And then we will compare this again to the allowable shear, that is equals to the reduction factor, 0.75, times one-sixth of the square root of the FC prime, times the width B, 3,500 mm, times the effective depth, D, 515 mm, divided by 1,000, and the result is 1,183.7 kN. And since the allowable shear is greater than the actual shear force, Therefore, the section is also safe for one-way shear along Y direction. And the fifth step is to check for the two-way shear or punching shear. To work on that, we will compare the punching shear, PV, to the allowable shear of the concrete. First, we will calculate for the average effective depth, D, that is equals to the thickness, 600 mm, minus the diameter, 20 mm, minus concrete cover, 75 mm, and that gives us a value of 505 mm. Now, the formula of punching shear, PV, is equals to the maximum ultimate load, PU, times open parenthesis, LX times LY, close parenthesis, minus, open parenthesis CX plus D, close parenthesis, times, open parenthesis CY plus D, close parenthesis, all over LX times LY. And that gives us a value of 2,286.5 kN. And we will then calculate for the allowable shear of concrete, which is equals to the reduction factor, times 0.33 square root of the concrete strength, times the perimeter of the punching area, 2 times open parenthesis, Cx plus Cy plus 2 times the effective depth, close parenthesis. And then multiply by the effective depth. And the result of the allowable shear, is equals to 2508.33 kN. And since the allowable shear, is greater than the punching shear, PV, therefore, the section is safe for two-way shear or punching shear. And that's it for this video. We will continue this for the next video. Thank you for watching.